Baldur emerges from the waters nearby, shocked to find his mother with his targets. Baldur threatens his mother, but Kratos steps between them. Oh! Bow. Bow. Ah! Oh my god! Oh my god! All right, ladies and gentlemen, hello. Welcome back to my house. How you doing, bro? You all right? I know you see the title and you like, no way this nigga taking the easy way out. I have to, bro. The game drops on Thursday, this coming Thursday. And I haven't beat it. I haven't beat it. Now, before y'all start, I did try to finish God of War, the 2018 version, as we all know, on stream. I got like maybe, maybe six hours into it. This is a long game. I was playing on easy mode too, bro. And I was barely where I was in the series on my channel now now if you've been here since 2018 you've seen that i've played the game bro the game came out four years ago and i still haven't beat it if there's one thing that i've been asked for over the years i mean y'all asked me for a lot too bro but god of war always gets brought up and i mean y'all flooding my comments with the god of war right now old videos new videos hey bro you know ragnarok dropping soon bro hey bro you know you didn't finish it right i see i see timestamp in the god of war video in the first episode for the for the series you know why i'm here nigga you finna be disappointed watch someone else bro so look we're gonna call this the finale sort of that's gonna be the name uh, uh, probably not i always say that's gonna be the name of the video and it's never the name of the video but this is going to be somewhat of a finale right because i don't have the time to just sit there and beat the original god of war i have four years i know bro i see y'all stop rest your fingers i see you typing it I know I have four years, but look, we're finishing it now, all right? Look, God of War 2018 story summary. Now, this is this is put on by the big homie, Suggestive Gaming. Thank you so much for allowing uh, us to, you know, watch your stuff. You do great video essays and you, you're handsome. Let's go. With God of War Ragnarok right around the corner, I, Suggestive Gaming, figured now would be a perfect time to catch up on what has led our heroes to where they currently stand. Hey, follow bro on Twitter for all, all y'all that still got uh, Twitters. I might come back to Twitter since it's Elon's Twitter now. I might, you know, I might see what's going on. You know I'm not. You may have already seen my video covering the original nigga straight lied God of War saga, maybe even on someone else's channel. And if you haven't, I recommend you do so before watching this video. You know what? I have it on stream remote, like I'm streaming for y'all right now. Put the camera back regular and let, let Bunk edit some swag here. As it will pick up exactly where that one left off. The link is in the description or on screen now, so head over there and come back once you're done to get the full story. And now, without further ado, this is what you need to know about God of War Part 2. Shout out to Sometime uh, after bringing an Kratos. end to the reign of the gods of Olympus, Kratos awakens to find himself denied of the comforts of death, and mm. instead cursed to walk the earth as punishment for his deeds. Soon the blades of chaos return to him, and he attempts to throw them into the sea, only to find them mysteriously return to him after a night's sleep. Hoping to escape from his past to at least find some kind of solitude in his eternal punishment, Kratos sets sail to new lands, again attempting to rid himself of the blades. Okay. When Kratos reaches shore, he passes out, and when he awakens, he finds the blades waiting for him once again. Damn, bro. It's like a clingy X, ain't it, bro? Like, damn, I'm done with you. Move on. Find somebody else to kill with. You know what I'm saying, bro? Get Kratos in that left picture, bro. Y'all ever been there? Trying to get rid of somebody that won't leave? I think we all have, bro. You know what's crazy? You might be the nigga that need to leave, bro. And somebody doing that behind your back, and you have no clue, but they just don't want to hurt your feelings. I'm not projecting, bro. He discards them again before coming across a village where he is met by the inhabitants with fear. He soon learns from an old man that his legend as the ghost of Sparta and the okay. god of war is known in this land of the pharaohs. And he can't escape his past for nothing. The man warns Kratos that he cannot escape his destiny, but Kratos simply knocks him aside and walks off. Damn. Come Kratos, on, Kratos continues walking sleeplessly to avoid the blade's return. As days turn into months, Kratos eventually succumbs to his slumber and awakens again to find the Blades of Chaos before him. Refusing to allow his past to keep up with him, Kratos again leaves the Blades behind and continues his trek, being taunted by various talking animals along the way who warn him of his destiny that lies ahead. Imagine you trying to travel the desert to leave your weapons behind and then pumpkin behind you talking. I couldn't imagine that one, bro. One of us would have to. 
I mean, Kratos is continent hopping, trying to get away from these weapons, bro. Now, Pumpkin, I would never do you dirt, Pump. I love you, Pump. Let me think of another animal. Imagine like, I don't know, Curious George following you talking. He getting teeth kicked in the mouth. Again, Kratos is overcome by exhaustion and passes out, finding Athena waiting for him in his dreams. The goddess tells Kratos that the two of them are not yet through with each other and mm. instructs him to return to his home and fulfill his purpose. Mm. Kratos then awakens, unsurprised to find the Blades of Chaos return to him once again. However, Kratos is surprised to find the old man from the village now before him. You ready to get his lick back? Who instructs him to pick up the blades to prepare for battle as oh, never mind. the hour he will be needed is fast approaching. Mm. Kratos defiantly throws the blades aside again and continues walking, eventually reaching the same village he left months ago. Ah, While wow. Kratos is confused at how he circled back to the village, he is soon distracted by the villagers who are again fearful, but not of him this time. Instead, they beg for his help in fighting the giant Chaos Beast, which soon attacks the village. The villagers and the mysteriously present old man surmise that their prayers to the gods summoned Kratos back. Kratos might be the most tormented man of all time, bro. Like, well, yeah, no, didn't Kratos originally, and, and I'm gonna I'm be honest, had we watched this other video, we probably wouldn't have known this. Kratos as a child, outraged at Zeus for fathering yet another bastard child, Hera ordered Kratos execution on the day he was born, but the king of the gods took pity on the child and refused, leaving him in Sparta to be raised by uh, Kaisto. Because he, so, okay, so he was a demigod and he was raised to be a soldier. Damn, yeah, so he's been trying to, like, people have been trying to kill him since he was, he was here. Angered at the thought of the gods controlling him once again, Kratos refuses to help. The villagers run to escape the beast, and Kratos turns to find that the old man has vanished, as the creature advances towards him. Kratos gives in and fights the Chaos Beast, defeating it with his bare hand. He was fighting the chains in this match, bro. He was not fighting the beast. Like, there was no, there's none of that here, bro. He's definitely taking his anger out. Afterwards, the villagers return, but tremble in fear once again, running off while screaming of a monster. Kratos, confused as the Chaos Beast is dead, turns to see the old man once again, who claims that the threat has not yet been defeated. He turns, and a much larger Chaos Beast emerges from the sea. Oh my gosh. The villagers beg Kratos to help them once again, but wanting to be left alone, he again simply walks away. The beast follows him, and an annoyed Kratos gives in, lunging at the monster to attack. The giant creature simply shrugs him off, sending Kratos crashing to the ground below, where the impact knocks him unconscious. Mm. In his dreams, Kratos finds Athena once again, this time accompanied by Thoth. And the dumbass bird. Oh, Thoth. Okay, that. Okay, some mythical bird. Excuse me. Egyptian god of wisdom, and the two tell Kratos that he must Stop, fulfill his purpose as it was written, instructing him to finally take the blades of chaos. Kratos tries to deny his fate, but Thoth, revealing himself to be the old man as well as all of the talking animals, oh. simply tells the former god of war that much like in his homelands, in the land of the pharaohs, his destiny is already written and cannot be avoided. Mm. How do y'all feel about that as an idea, bro? Your destiny is already written and can be avoided? Part of me really believes that that's the case, you know? Like, it was kind of written for us all to be who we are going to be. But then, like, if that is the case, that means that we have no real free will because it's already been written for us what we're going to do. But I do believe that we have free will because we can kind of shape our lives to be what it wants to be. I hate talking like this because I feel like somebody's in the comments like, bro, what are you saying? But I just be trying to process thoughts in real time. Let's take a look. I know, no wonder why I'm curious about this because, you know, it's biblical. What does the Bible say about predestination versus free will? This is gotquestions.org. Why not, right? Why not? We have a free will in the sense that we are capable of making moral choices. Our decision making is impacted by numerous factors, though. Our sin, our, our sin nature, our upbringing, our intellect, our training, education, our biology, psychology. So human beings do not truly have a free will as popularly defined. We have a will. We can make decisions. Biblically speaking, we have the responsibility to respond to what God has revealed to us. I should have streamed this because then I could have heard y'all opinion and y'all could have like talked to me as I was processing this. That's what's really cool about streaming. Like just being able to like talk about things and not feel like I'm finna be judged. Kratos frustrated that he is still a slave to fate, but now knowing that there's nothing he can do about it, simply grabs the blades of chaos and continues walking, forced to relive his nightmares in his mind as he journeys towards his destiny. 
another new land. Decades later, Kratos has found his way to the land of the Norse gods. Okay, so okay, so we just finished volume two. This is volume one now. And after volume one, we get into the gameplay. So here we go. Where he meets a woman named Faye, whom he marries and settles down with in a home in the wild woods region of the Midgard realm. Okay, so look, I hate to keep pausing it like this, and this, this point is probably irrelevant, but I just want to say real quick. So you, you see how like even a tyrant, right? Like Kratos himself. When he gets himself in the hands of a good woman, all the voices in his head seem to disappear in the quiet and stillness of the TLC from his woman. It makes him feel how he's been desperately seeking to feel since infancy. I see it, bro. I see it, bro. Hey, y'all, I'm gonna tell you like this. The wife is the flex. The wife is the flex, bro. I got enough married friends now to see, to see green pastures. When it comes to marriage, bro, and, and a lot of people be feeling like like them days is done, bro. Maybe not even marriage, just monogamy. You know what I'm saying? Commitment, a bond, a strong bond. Like, bro, he good now, bro. He got his wife making good uh, pot roast in the kitchen, staring at him while he chopping wood and fighting bears, ripping jaws off. The pair soon have a child who Kratos gives the name Atreus. He finishing the job, shooting the club up, and now he got a seed of, of his own, bro. Come on, y'all. Yes after a Spartan soldier he fought alongside long ago. That's fire. And he decides to keep his status as a demigod a secret from the boy. Mm. Hoping to learn to control his rage, Kratos frequently ventures out into the woods, where he is attacked by the animals inside. Nigga went out there, Owning no anger, weapon. He learns to refrain from fighting back and instead simply deflect their attacks. So what is he doing to that wolf on the right? Cause that looked like a right uppercut smoothly across the jaw. However, he soon learns from a large troll that he still doesn't have full control over his emotions. One day, Faye leaves to go hunting, leaving Atreus and Kratos at home. Kratos instructs Atreus to stay behind and chop wood as he heads off to find another challenge for his rage control. He soon comes across a giant bear attacking an old man, and Kratos fails to control himself, Damn. violently killing the bear before walking off. Hold on, bro. Uh, real quick. That's a bear? What bear is that, bro? Monokuma? And Kratos fails to control himself. That's a werewolf. killing the bear before walking off, blaming the old man for setting off the events that led to him losing control. How do you blame a dead man for something, bro? Kratos, he can't. Look at Kratos looking at him, too. Hey, may, hey, maybe the wife ain't enough. Maybe the wife ain't enough. You got a troubled spirit, sir. Your wife need to take the kid in dead leaves him for dead, returning home as another group of men watch him pass through an illusionary wall cloaking his home. Harry Potter. Kratos returns to find Atreus playing with toys instead of chopping the wood, but before he can scold the boy, the group of men arrive and begin to speak to Kratos in their tongue, which he cannot understand. What toy was Kratos? He was playing with a piece of wood. <laughs> How do you know he wasn't chopping, bro? They're playing with pine cones and he's calling them toys. He's about to get whooped over it. Atreus translates and reveals that the men have come to take revenge on Kratos, blaming him for their brother's death. Kratos denies killing anyone, claiming that he only killed a beast. The bear, yep. Before the men transform into bear-like creatures yep. themselves and engage in battle. Yeah. Kratos defeats the creatures, Ooh. killing one threatening Atreus. Look at how big that bear is in comparison to the axe, bro. With the axe the boy was to use to cut the wood. When another man threatens to go bring the rest of his clan to the house, Kratos chases him, bringing Atreus along. Ooh. Frustrated at losing the man's trail, Kratos begins to feel his rage boiling inside. Run, Atreus. He's able to control it, just as he tries to teach Atreus to control his own fear. Mm. Atreus suggests that the pair visit the old seer, who may know more about the clan of beastmen. Kratos mm. agrees, and Atreus leads the way. Look at Atreus, little like, little devious ass, bro. How did you know that? Like Batman and Robin right now, bro. Look how excited he is to snitch. Once they arrive at her hut, Kratos speaks with the seer, who reveals that the men are known as berserkers, who receive their strength from their own fury, focusing it through a totem they worship. Kratos asks the location of the totem, and the seer only states that she can reveal the location through a ritual she must perform. Okay. Kratos and Atreus wait outside for her answer, a little side and soon quest. she shows them the way to the totem, warning Kratos that he must control his own anger in order to defeat the Berserkers. Mm. Kratos leaves Atreus with the seer and journeys to the Berserkers' camp, 
where he finds their sacred totem. Okay. While Kratos initially tries to sneak past the sleeping berserkers to destroy their idol, you know it's not one happening. awakens and alerts the rest as they transform into their bear-like forms. Kratos' rage immediately burns white hot, and he attempts to fight the horde, only to find their own strength surpassing his. No way. Finding himself unable to use his brute strength alone, Kratos remembers the seer's words and centers himself, controlling his rage and thinking quickly to destroy the totem, transforming the berserkers back to their human forms, who he is easily able to kill before burning their encampment to the ground. Oh my gosh. Back in the seer's hut. Just destruction everywhere he goes. But the old woman gives Atreus a mysterious knife, telling him he must use it soon. Before he can ask what she means, a berserker arrives in the hut and attacks the seer. Mm. Kratos arrives shortly after and snaps the man's neck, mm. instantly killing him. As she lays dying, the seer asks Kratos to take care of her remains, before warning him that while he is able to defeat his enemies with ease, one day he'll have to conquer himself. Mm. That's a double entendre too, and it was crazy. I don't even know how the game ends. This sucks, bro. Cause that could mean he's got to overcome his own emotions or fighting himself also means fighting Atreus, bro. And I know that y'all have finished the game and y'all are like, well, yeah, they fight at the end. I don't even know if that's true or not. Do they? What happens at the end of this game? Let's find out. Kratos Man. exits the woman's hut and he and Atreus build a funeral pyre for the seer's body. As they walk back home, Kratos tells his son, as well as himself, that from now on, he'll handle the fighting. Not too long after, a dying fae asks Kratos to scatter her ashes at the highest peak in the Nine Realms. After she passes, Kratos uses her weapon, the Leviathan Axe, to chop down a tree marked with her handprint. So what I found interesting at is these, these two volumes are prequels to the game. And this, this volume dropped 2021. This one dropped a year after the game and now we're playing the game. Now, he doesn't have anything after this because obviously there's nothing after this, but interesting, interesting. To use for assembling her funeral pyre. While cremating Faye's body, Atreus notices her knife and grabs it, burning his hand in the process. Kratos nurses Atreus's wound, giving the boy his mother's knife. Knowing that now it is his sole responsibility to raise his son, Kratos takes Atreus hunting to prove himself. What can we take from, from Atreus grabbing the knife and hurting his hand? um maybe that he is a helping hand to kratos that atreus grabs his bow and the pair go looking for deer while Faye's body burns while atreus finds a deer he is unable to calm himself enough to hit it as it runs off as the pair track the deer they are attacked by undead draugers which atreus notes have never come that close to their home before so this is a great video again subscribe to the homie suggestive game and this is a phenomenal video i'm gonna fast forward to where i remember we were in the story long story and, and if you do want to check out this video for yourself you can of course check the link in the description the video will be right there he also has like god of war stories from like the first three and on the playstation series and all that stuff bro and and obviously he does his research outside of the game so uh from what i remember right um conor mcgregor shows up i'm gonna just fast forward to like certain spots right this dude shows up has beef with kratos they squabble um kratos is like it's not safe here we have to go they're on their way to uh somewhere i can't remember where but then they end up hunting a boar belongs to this lady kratos has to bring the boar back to this home uh, has to do things in order to save the boar and get it healthy then she puts me onto this ability to uh to uh essentially travel fast travel to different locations on the map but i'm gonna let bro explain it that it's his problem to deal with after atreus and kratos retrieve the materials for the medicine the witch offers her thanks by giving them marks which will hide them from the gods she then opens a shortcut for them to pass through before they say their goodbyes okay so again she knows that atreus is a demigod she knows that i'm hiding that from atreus and i'm pretty sure that's a critical point right anyway the water level of the lake drops allowing the two to find the Temple of the Norse God of War, Tyr, where they again meet Brock. Traversing through the temple, Kratos and Atreus emerge back on the path to the mountain to find another dwarf. Okay, so yeah, we've seen all this, we've seen all this. Okay, so this is probably where it starts to get a little bit of foggy for me. So we have uh, potentially 20 more minutes of this video. I might be kind of quiet, but probably not. He speaks with the giant who aligns the tower's bridge to where they need to go, 
the location of a magical chisel that will allow them to draw the rune that will open the gate to Jotunheim. The trio head to the corpse of the chisel's former owner, the giant Thamor. Sheesh. Kratos and Atreus climb the dead giant's hammer, releasing it from the chains holding it up, causing it to fall and smash through the frozen tundra below, allowing the pair to make their way to the chisel. On their way, however, they hear the voices of the two men that were with the stranger when he confronted Mimir, yep, 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 Modi yep, yep. and Magni, two sons of Odin's son, Thor. We squabble them. Try to I think we, I, I think I, I know I fought them in my God of War, in my God of War series, but uh, I think that might've been the last video in the series, bro. The last thing was me fighting them. That's so crazy. I really just dropped the ball and this shit has 619K views. That will not be the case here. That will not be the case here. That will not be the case here. Avoid the two demigods, Modi and Magni soon find Kratos and Atreus, prompting a long and grueling battle. Which During I beat. the battle, Modi taunts Atreus by speaking ill of his mother, which causes the boy to lose control of his anger and go after him. Kratos, meanwhile, violently kills Magni, forcing Modi to run off in fear. Mm. Afterwards, Atreus collapses from his sickness, but the pair press on. After reaching the buried chalice, Kratos is able to break off a piece for his own use, and the pair leave, with Mimir warning Kratos that there will be repercussions for killing Thor's son. Mimir surmises that they'll be able to learn the giant's secret rune by finding it in Tyr's hidden vault, below the temple, and they head there to investigate. Using the chisel, Kratos is able to find the vault, where he and Atreus are soon ambushed by Modi. The demigod insults Fae once again, causing Atreus to lunge at him. While Modi simply smacks him aside, Atreus' rage finally boils over, and he has his own moment of Spartan rage. I'm so mad at myself, bro, and I feel like I'm gonna be doing this a lot during this video. This would have had me so hyped to see, to see Lil ATM activate his Spartan rage over his mama. You're not gonna destroy this boy's mama. Overwhelming him and causing him to collapse. I would have got so upset seeing that though. Like, like I would have got hyped and been like, nigga, are you serious? Kratos' own rage then takes hold and he overpowers Modi, taking his weapons and causing him to flee once again. Kratos grabs the unconscious Atreus and takes him back to Freya at Mimir's suggestion. Okay. On their way, Kratos hears someone blowing the world serpent's horn. When he reaches Freya's hut, the witch reveals that Atreus' true nature is fighting within him and Kratos keeping it a secret is what is causing the boy's illness. Mm. To help him, Freya sends Kratos to the realm of the dead, Helheim, to retrieve the bridge keeper's heart. However, due to the realm's frigid nature, Freya warns that the Leviathan Axe will be useless against the enemies Kratos will face there. Knowing that Kratos must use the only weapon in the nine realms that can create a flame, he leaves Atreus in Freya's care and returns home. On his way, Kratos witnesses a haunting vision of someone from his past, the Olympian goddess Athena, who he is able to temporarily shake. When Kratos reaches his home, he retrieves what he came for, the Blades of Chaos, Ooh. which he buried underneath the house decades prior when he found that he could not escape them. Athena okay. appears before him once again and taunts Kratos, claiming that he'll never be able to change and will forever be a monster. Kratos Damn, accepts Athena? this fate, but claims that at least he's no longer her monster. Ooh. With the blades returned to his wrist. Ooh. Only reviews that I've seen so far about God of, War, God of War Ragnarok is that it is a masterpiece. It's a 10 out of 10 across the board. It's just not as mem memorable or not as, uh, I don't know. I don't know the phrase you would say impactful as the original, which I mean, come on, bro. Yeah, something like this is probably like, like fresh, you know? That's the only critique people have. Something like this is just the story is just so fire, bro. Kratos makes his way back to Tyr's temple, where he uses the realm travel room to reach Helheim. There, Mimir notices that Hel has become overwhelmed with the dead. They eventually reach the Bridge of the Damned, where Kratos fights the Bridge Keeper. After killing the large creature, he's mm. able to rip out its heart to take back to Freya. As he goes to leave the realm, Kratos spots an illusion of his father, Zeus beyond the bridge, wow. but Mimir warns him not to go there, stating that Hell is known to torment its inhabitants with their pasts. On their way back to Midgard, Mimir realizes that Kratos is the legendary ghost of Sparta, and he also encourages him to tell Atreus about his true nature, mm. stating that because Kratos hates all gods, 
That includes his own son, and Atreus can sense it, and it will only harm their relationship the longer it's kept secret. Mm. Kratos brushes this off and returns to Freya's home. Kratos gives Freya the heart, and she tells him that the only way to fully heal Atreus is by telling him the truth. Freya then confides in Kratos and tells him about her own son, who was prophesized to die a needless death, forcing her to make a sacrifice to protect him, which only led to his resentment of her and drove him away. After Freya uses the heart to heal Atreus, the boy awakens and the pair leave, with Kratos giving his thanks to the witch on their way. As the father and son make their way back to Tyr's vault, Atreus grows distant. Kratos asks him about this, and the boy reveals that he overheard part of his father's conversation with Freya, interpreting it to mean that Kratos is disappointed in his son for being weak. Bro. Kratos finally gives in and tells him. Whoa! I know, bro. I know, bro. I'm mad at myself too, bro. Tells his son the truth, that he is a god from a faraway land. Kratos reveals that when he arrived in Midgard, he chose to live as a man, but in truth, he was born a god, as was Atreus. Atreus is shocked with this revelation and asks if his mother was a god as well, and Kratos responds that she was only a mortal. When asked why he waited so long- Look at him, bro. Back- You won't get respect if you're back, Naughty Rag. He over here like, is my mama god? Like, bro, come on now. And Kratos was worried. Look at his posture long to reveal the truth, Kratos tells his son that he had hoped to spare him of the lifetime of tragedy that he himself went through. Respect. On their way back to the vault, Atreus notes that he doesn't have any godly powers yet, but Mimir theorizes that the boy's faculty for language is one of them. Mm. The pair are finally able to descend below Tyr's temple to his vault and look for the black rune. In a room full of treasure from the various lands, Kratos finds a bottle of wine from his homeland and next to it, a vase depicting his days as the god of war, oh which he quickly gosh. tosses aside, breaking it upon the ground. When the pair find the rune, they must lower it to retrieve it. As Kratos operates the mechanism, however, he is caught in a vine-like trap. Atreus is forced to quickly solve a puzzle related to the prophesized apocalyptic event known as Ragnarok, but when he does so, spikes begin to descend from the ceiling. Atreus is then forced to use his mother's knife to jam the gears operating the spike trap, saving his father, but destroying the boy's heirloom in the process. Aww. When the pair finally reach the rune, Kratos gives Atreus a new knife, one he forged himself from metals from his own land, as well as Faze, on the day of his son's birth. Which oh my gosh, listen to the symbolism behind this knife, bro. I'm cutting a nigga immediately after this. The intention of gifting it to him when he was ready to use it. Atreus then uses the knife to retrieve the rune, and he takes note of it before the pair are attacked by a pair of two large trolls. After the battle, the pair return to the surface, and Kratos gives Atreus a drink of the wine he found from his homeland on the way. <laughs> he looked at him like weak bitch <laughs> and then just to snatch their bag, bro. Kratos and Atreus make their way back to the gateway to Jotunheim, seeing Sindri on their way. Atreus, now arrogant and empowered by his knowledge of being a god, insults the dwarf, leaving him visibly hurt. Oh, no, nah, no way. No way Atreus turned into this guy, bro. That's the same thing that happened with um, um, uh, Amon in House of Dragons, bro. I love the show, bro. I, I miss it already. Amon got him that got him that super dragon and all of a sudden he became a straight asshole, bro, but was getting bullied the whole time. Atreus wasn't even bullied, bro. He kind of was by his dad. He kind of was, but it was a matter of life or death. It wasn't just like kitty time at the sandbox, bro. This leads Kratos to ask how his mother would react to Atreus behaving this way, mm. but the boy brushes it off, implying that her opinion wouldn't matter seeing as she wasn't a god. Kratos, Ooh. retorting that she was better than a god, warns his son against dishonoring his mother. As they enter the caverns in the mountain, Kratos and Atreus are again stopped by Modi, but when Modi makes one final insult towards Faye, Atreus stabs him in the neck with his new blade before kicking him off a nearby ledge. Kratos scolds the boy for killing an already defeated enemy in indulgence instead of in defense, and he further warns that there are especially consequences for killing gods. The two reach the summit of the mountain, and Atreus draws the rune on the gateway, allowing Kratos to use the chisel to trace it and open the portal to Jotunheim. I missed Atreus' whole villain arc, bro. The, oh, oh my gosh, this dude turned into a little, like, 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 
Demon Jr. a little bit because he's still killing only bad people. He just be talking his shit now, which I mean, look at you, look at you, bro. Look at you, Kratos. As much damage as you call, bro. Let him cuss a little. Before they can enter, however, Kratos is ambushed by Balder. And when Atreus attempts to help, he reveals that he is also a god, but is quickly overpowered. Oof. Kratos grabs Balder and slams him into the stone gate, Bitch. collapsing it and destroying their only way to Jotunheim. Atreus tries to fight, but Kratos holds him back, forcing the boy to shoot his father with one of his lightning arrows to subdue him. Atreus then rushes at Balder, stabbing him with his knife, but the invincible man simply pulls it out of his arm and plants it in Atreus's. Oh, I thought that mess went into his neck. You know, you know they did that intentionally to make it seem the that way. The invincible man simply pulls it out of that. I guess, I guess that shoulder. But if I was watching this first time and not being able to rewind, I'd be freaking out. And plants it in Atreus's, grabbing the boy and jumping off the mountain. Kratos follows and lands on Baldur's dragon, where he fights the man, eventually getting knocked off the dragon A to the bridge of Tyr's temple below. Look at this. Kratos runs inside the temple and reaches the realm travel room, where he finds that Baldur has locked in the bridge to the realm of Asgard, the home of Odin and the other gods of his tribe. Mm. Kratos struggles to insert his Bifrost and instead locks the bridge into Helheim, where he, Atreus, and Baldur are violently sucked in. There, Kratos is able to knock Baldur aside, and he and Atreus land safely within the realm. After Kratos scolds his son for acting out of character, asking him to honor his mother and choose the right path, the pair work their way to a boat they can use to get back to Tyr's temple. Wait, 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 after what? And he and Atreus land safely within the realm. After Kratos scolds his son for acting out of character, asking him to honor his mother and choose the right path, the pair work their way to a boat they can use to get back to Tyr's temple. On their way, the pair experience visions of Atreus's past, Helheim's way of torturing its inhabitants, and the boy watches how he killed Modi in shame. Mm. The pair soon find Baldur reliving one of his own memories, and they learn that he is none other than Freya's estranged son. Mm. <laughs> no wonder Atreus knew so much about him when she pulled up originally. As it turns out, when she placed a spell on him to make him invincible, he was robbed not only of the feeling of pain, but also any of the pleasures of life. Wow. He begged his mother to remove the spell, but knowing it would cause her son's death, she refused. Wow. This caused Balder to strangle his mother, but at the last moment, he allowed her to live, a decision he now regrets. When Kratos and Atreus reach the boat, they begin to see visions of Kratos' past, that of his final battle with Zeus. After getting the boat to set sail upwards towards the bridge, the pair watch the memory of Kratos killing his father, Oof. and Atreus is forced to snap his father's attention back to the task at hand as the ship begins to crash. The pair jump to a nearby building, crashing through the roof and landing inside of one of Odin's secret You know what I find interesting about this scene is like, Atreus sees this too and doesn't judge his father or isn't afraid of his father that he'll do the same thing. Uh, well, okay, hold on, hold on. My example doesn't work because Atreus would be Kratos in this example right here. So I guess what I'm saying is like Atreus doesn't even like recognize this, but now that the example don't work, Atreus probably don't even see himself as Kratos versus his dad. He's probably just like, dad, we're about to fucking crash, sir. The roof and landing inside of one of Odin's secret chambers. There, Atreus finds a panel depicting Tyr somehow traveling to different lands, including Kratos' own homeland. Using the gift of sight granted to him by the giants, Mimir is able to uncover secret plans on the panel to create a key for another chamber Tyr kept hidden, which will lead them to Jotunheim. Hoping to create the key, the group head back to Brock, realizing that when Freya reanimated Mimir's head, she placed a spell on him to never speak about her relationship to Baldur or what his one weakness is. Damn, when magic is Brock, magic kind of crazy to be able to like put specific subjects ban, bro. I'm not saying I'm, I'm into magic or nothing, but like I might need to find me a little brew or something, bro, I don't know. Is that blasphemous to say? <laughs> He refuses to make the key, but Sindri arrives shortly after to reconcile with his brother and help forge it. Kratos and Atreus find the secret chamber and open it with the key, finding themselves below the realm travel room in a seemingly upside down room. 
The pair work to break the chains holding the temple's chambers, and Kratos is able to flip it using his brute strength. Mm. When they climb back up to the realm travel room, they find what Tyr was hiding, the Unity Stone, which allowed Tyr to travel within the realm between realms to reach all of the lands he explored. Using the stone, Kratos enters the realm between realms and jumps into the void, landing safely to find the tower to Jotunheim, hidden uh. there by Tyr to protect the realm of the giants. Inside the tower, Kratos finds a pedestal that absorbs the Unity Stone and unleashes various powerful enemies from the various realms Kratos and Atreus traveled. After the grueling battle, the pair emerge from the tower to find themselves back in Midgard, with the tower to Jotunheim returned to a location the Bridge of Tears temple can reach. It sounds like a lot of metaverse action right now, but I'm not gonna lie. Like a lot of like cross crossovers and stuff. Like basically he jumped into a void, fought everybody during the journey and got to where he needed to go. Got you. When they enter the realm travel room to lock in the bridge, however, Mimir realizes the travel crystal is missing. And in order to travel, the pair will need to find his other eye, which was taken by Odin. They ask Brock and Sindri if they know where Mimir's other eye is, and Brock reveals that Odin placed it in a statue of Thor, which Kratos and Atreus saw swallowed by the world serpent. Damn. Mimir blows the serpent's horn once again and asks if they can investigate his stomach for the eye, which the ancient giant agrees to and the group grab their boat and row inside. The ancient dragon, cool, there, bro, he cool. They to find the eye and return it to his head. Nice. Now with everything required to reach Jotunheim, the pair row their boat back out of the creature. On the way, however, they begin to feel massive blasts outside. I bet, I, gar I guarantee it's, uh, it's Balder, bro. Soon the creature spits them out and they land nearby as the world serpent falls unconscious. Freya arrives confused as to what happened to the serpent. She claims to be looking for her son, but is surprised to find Kratos and Atreus meeting her with suspicion. Shortly after, Baldur emerges from the waters nearby, shocked to find his mother with his targets. Baldur threatens his mother, but Kratos steps between them. Oh! Ah! I wanna flip this desk, bro. I wanna flip this desk, bro. Gaming ain't dead! So many fire stories that I just want to get hype about, bro, that I don't even know exist yet, and that I do, and then I fumble the bag. Trying to tell the man that he will find no peace in vengeance. When Baldur refuses to listen, another fight between the two breaks out, with Freya attempting to stop the two. Atreus attempts to stop Baldur, but the man delivers a mighty punch to the boy's chest. Damn. Kratos catches his son, worried that the boy is covered in blood. I know, I know he can't breathe right here. I can't hear him, but I know he like... <laughs> Bro, them, them punches be the worst, bro. I remember as a little kid, I got I got tackled in a chest like that one time into a church pew. And I swear I was doing the same thing. And I wanted to fight back. I was like, when I got my breath, I tried to fight back because the dude just had me in a tackle like my, like my, like, like just into a pew. And I was just like, I'm really, I'm really weak. Like I really can't get this guy off of me. I really just got to wait till he, till he's done with this. That's terrifying, bro. I wouldn't wish it on anybody. Yeah, my kid gotta, gotta be in karate, out the womb. Which, Atreus simply states, isn't his. Kratos looks up to see Baldur with the mistletoe from Atreus' repaired quiver lodged in his hand, with the man delighted that he can finally feel something. Nearby, Freya, realizing that the spell protecting her son had been broken by his one weakness, reanimates the corpse of the giant Famor, which grabs them and carries them off to a new location. Baldur follows, and another fight ensues, with the giddy man now enjoying the feeling of battle. While Freya continues to try to use Thamor's body to interrupt the fight, Kratos is able to gain the upper hand, eventually causing the woman to have Thamor use his frosty breath to freeze them. Atreus thinks quickly and uses his abilities to speak the old language of the giants to call upon the now awakened world serpent to take the giant's corpse out of the equation. Oh my gosh. Afterwards, Kratos begins oh my to gosh. Baldur, but Atreus reminds him that he doesn't need to kill a beaten enemy. Oh my gosh! Don't look at me, bro. Don't look at me, bro. I know, bro. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. There's still opportunities. Because what this is doing is show me the story, right? It's showing me the story. But we have to play Ragnarok. But this, 
we can go back now and experience all this shit, all the dialogue, all the fights. It's not the same, I know, bro. But just imagine all the emotion that's captivated in these scenes that he's talking over. We can still unpack that together, bro. Me. Kratos gives Baldur one final warning to leave him, Atreus, and Freya alone before walking off. Baldur ignores this warning and approaches his mother, refusing to forgive her and instead begins to strangle her, which she accepts if it'll make him feel better. Kratos then grabs Baldur and quotes his father Zeus, stating, The cycle ends here, before also stating that we must be better than this, before snapping the man's neck. In his last breath, Baldur sees the snow beginning to fall, as he finally dies his needless death. Freya rushes over to his body and promises Kratos that she will use all of her abilities to punish him for what he has taken from her. She states that Kratos is a cruel and rage-filled animal who will never change, and asks if Atreus knows the true depths of his father's past. Kratos then reveals his true history to his son, telling him about the deal he made with a god, and how it led him to killing the innocent, the guilty, and even his own father. Atreus asks if he will be cursed to kill Kratos, but the Spartan simply states that OH MY GOD! This whole time I've been thinking about, cause again, I be thinking about this game too, bro. You ain't the only one who want to see it finish. When I think about this game, I did not expect Atreus to have that response. I thought he was gonna be like, you monster, I'm a demigod. I'm going to kill you. He's sad and the first thing he asks is, am I cursed of having to kill? Mm, I hope I have a son, bro. I hope I have a son, bro. Me and him gonna be locked, twinsies. Like, come on, bro. That's a bond right there. Capital B-O-N-D. Wow. That we will be the gods we choose to be, not those who have been. Freya then picks up Baldur's body and walks off without saying another word. Yeah, because your words has fallen on deaf ears now. This is my son, not yours. You go, go worry about yours in your, in your, in your hands, bitch. Well, that nigga looking at the snow as you walk him off upwards like... His neck broke, bro. I know we just seen him looking up, but imagine, like, really, though. And lock in Jotunheim in the realm travel room. Nigga, bobblehead walking back to the forest. To focus the energy to travel, and the door to the realm of the giants is finally unlocked. Mimir requests that they leave him behind so the father and son can have their moment, and Kratos leaves him with Brock and Sindri at the temple. As they approach the summit of the mountain, Kratos removes the bandages covering his scars from the Blades of Chaos claiming that he no longer has anything to hide. He then hands Faye's ashes to Atreus, allowing him to carry them the rest of the way. The pair find a room with statues depicting the giant's exodus from Midgard. They wonder why Faye sent them there, but Atreus touches a wall, revealing a large mural. The pair are shocked to see that the mural depicts Faye, as well as all of the events the father and son had lived through, including the battle that just happened. Kratos surmises that the mural depicts Atreus' story, and that he wasn't the only parent with secrets. Atreus then realizes that Faye was a giant, making him part god, part oh giant, my and god! part mortal. Kratos also realizes that Baldur was never looking for him, but rather had been sent by Odin to find Faye. As Atreus continues up the mountain, Kratos spots one last panel, depicting Atreus screaming in pain, while holding a man's dead body. <gasps> Finally at the peak of the highest mountain in the Nine Realms, Atreus and Kratos look around to see the remains of dead giants. Kratos, finally calling Atreus son, elects that the two scatter Faye's ashes together. The two then say their goodbyes to Faye, as her remains join those of her kind. Afterwards, Atreus reveals one last thing confusing him about the mural. When translated, he was referred to by the giants as Loki. Kratos recalls that this was the name Faye wanted to give Atreus when he was born, but he elects to save this mystery for another day. Kratos and Atreus return to the realm travel room to regroup with Mimir, and as they return to Midgard, he warns that their actions have accelerated the coming of the great Fimblewinter, which precedes Ragnarok. 
Atreus and Kratos return to their home and finally rest. In his sleep, Atreus sees a vision of the end of the winter years later in which a powerful lightning storm rips apart their house. When Kratos and Atreus approach the door, they see a large, hooded figure standing outside. Kratos asks who he is, and the man simply reveals a hammer, the legendary Molnir, revealing that the figure is none other than Odin's son, the god of thunder himself, Thor. Fucking no way, While this way, is only bro. a vision, the pair nonetheless set forth with trying to prevent Ragnarok, with help from some familiar faces as well as new ones, while also facing opposition from those they once knew and those they'll soon meet in the next chapter of their journey, God of War, Ragnarok. Hey everybody, thanks for sticking through. This one wound up being on the longer side, but I really- Shout out Suggestive Gaming. Thank you so much for- for the video, bro. That's all I needed. That's all that I needed for this, bro. Holy moly. Holy moly. Okay. All right. All right. Look, look. I, I hate that I had to do it this way because as you can see, like, there was probably so many more of those hype moments that I missed out on. Neither here nor there, though. We are going to play Ragnarok. We're going to beat it all at the same time. Consecutive videos. Finish the series. And then we're going to start back with our regularly scheduled program. We do a little bit of this. We do a little bit of that. Um, damn, I'm sorry it took me so long to even, you know, cap this video. And I know it's not a legit finale, but again, like we can play this over, um, after Ragnarok, you know, sometime next year, that could be cool. Maybe like a stream game again, do something like that. But wow, it's not how I expected the ending. So at least I didn't get spoiled all these years, surprisingly. But I knew like when I seen Atreus in the new trailer, I was like, yo, uh, so they must be good. Either they fought and they, and they squashed it or they didn't fight at all. To see like the bond got even stronger kratos deserves that bro he deserves that it's almost like the karma of all his bad deeds is a son who actually respects him and, and and somebody he can be proud of somebody he can love and vice versa bro it's a shame that we might be seeing the end of kratos after this depending on how the murals go but the mules haven't been wrong ever huh have they so might be the end of, of of that story but i highly doubt it bro i highly doubt it well ladies and gentlemen i don't want to take up too much of your time there you have it we are ready for god of war ragnarok those of y'all who have been waiting on me to finish it i apologize but we did get you know the same ending potentially you and i unless you went and finished it yourself which I, i'm guaranteed you did and you just wanted to see how i acted it's a shame that i robbed y'all that experience bro because that shit would have been lit as fuck ragnarok though ragnarok keep our eyes on the prize moving forward if you enjoyed the video make sure you just slap a like if you enjoyed the video make sure you do Go subscribe to the homie Suggestive Gaming in the description down below. Make sure you say please send me blah blah blah. Hopefully you don't strike my channel or my video. Hey bro, please bro, please bro. I just you know I appreciate you bro. And you handsome. Like the video, subscribe for more. I love y'all. See you in the next video. Peace. Look at that fat. Look at that fat. Mario. Look at that fat. Look at that fat. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that fat. 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 Back, 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 back